What's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to take a look at the all new Azul Access 3 Fanless Mini PC Stick. Now I have a ton of mini PC boxes, but I've never owned one of these sticks. I'm really interested to see how it performs. This will actually be my third Azul Mini PC. Love the quality. If you compare it to B-Link, there's really no comparison. Azul hasn't beaten pretty much every aspect. So this little thing looks pretty cool. We have Windows 10 Pro pre-installed, a quad-core Intel N4100 Gemini Lake CPU, 4GB of DDR4 RAM, 32GB of internal storage. You can get an upgraded model with 64. It does 4K 60fps and video, and it has two full-size USB 3.0 ports. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing out of the box and see what we got here. So here it is. Aside from a few manuals that come inside of the packaging, we have a full-size HDMI extender, a 3 amp micro USB power supply, and the stick itself. This mini PC stick is tiny. Here's a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus side by side. I just wanted to give you kind of a size comparison here. One thing I do notice is the mini PC is pretty heavy. This is meant to plug directly into an HDMI port on your TV. I'm not sure how long I would trust it plugged into a side port, but if you had a port coming straight out of the bottom, it'd be perfectly fine. I just wouldn't want it to damage an HDMI port that's on the side of my TV over time. They also include a full-size HDMI extender, so you might think about using that if you have a side port on your television. Alright, so on one side we have two full-size USB 3.0 ports, a micro USB port used for the power supply, and a power button. Over on the front or the back, whatever you want to call it, this is HDMI out. This is going to either plug into your TV or an HDMI extender. Moving around to the other side, there's not much going on here. We do have a micro SD card slot. I have tested a 256 gigabyte card in here and it works fine. I don't see why a larger card wouldn't work in something like this. We also have our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna. This stick does have AC Wi-Fi built in, but some people just want to use Ethernet, so they've included an Ethernet port on the very end, along with a 3.5mm audio jack and a Kingston lock port. So I'm super excited to test this out. I do have another mini PC with an N4100 Gemini Lake CPU, but for some reason B-Link locked it down to 1.1GHz. It will not boost when I'm trying to play a game or an emulator. Hopefully, this one's set up a little different. Let's go ahead and get into the operating system. It does come pre-installed with Windows 10 Pro, fully activated. Alright, so setup was super simple, just like any Windows PC, just set up your password and username. I've also installed a bunch of apps to test out. I'm using an external 1TB USB 3.0 drive. Let's go over the specs one more time here. For the CPU, we have a Celeron Gemini Lake N4100 CPU at 1.1GHz, but it does turbo up to 2.3 when needed. 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM soldered to the board. It's clocked at 2133 MHz. And the GPU is an Intel UHD 600. So it's not the best of the best GPU, but it will handle video playback, video streaming, and some lower end games pretty well. The first thing I figured I'd test is some native 4K video playback. Now, my video player of choice is Kodi. It just works with a lot of different codecs very well. And I know a lot of people are going to want to use this for 4K and 1080p viewing. I got a few different file choices here. Now remember, all of these are higher bitrate than you're ever going to stream from Prime or Netflix or even YouTube. First up, 30fps, 4K, MP4, Big Buck Bunny. I test this on pretty much everything I have and I can tell you within the first 20 seconds of this video playing if it's going to play fine or not. and it looks like it's gonna play perfectly at 4K 30 FPS. Usually we get a lot of choppiness when it's coming down on those trees if it's not gonna handle it. This is only 30, we'll move to 60 next, but I'm gonna let this play for just a second. So 4K 30 is perfect. 
we're gonna move over to 4K60. Now this is a pretty demanding MP4 file here. Hopefully this little Gemini Lake will handle it. So video playback looks great, but we also have to worry about audio because sometimes it desyncs itself. Well, I'm actually impressed. It's playing this 60 FPS 4K video really well. Now, sometimes if the sound is desynchronized, you can sync it back up in Kodi or whatever app you're using, but it looks like it's doing a pretty good job here. 99% of people who are consuming 4K content are streaming it from an online service. It will never be at this high of a bit rate coming from Netflix, Hulu, or Prime. This stick will definitely handle streaming. Next, I'm gonna check out some jellyfish. 120 megabits per second, 4K, UHD, HEVC, 10 bit. This is an MKV file. Let's go ahead and test it out. Now these videos don't have sound. This is just more of a video bitrate test. It's taking a little while to load. Got some stuttering starting off, but it does catch up to itself. It's got a few stutters here and there. It's not as bad as I thought. I thought it would just lag out the whole time. I got a couple more videos to test here. One of them is the same format at 200 megabits a second. If we were stuttering on 120, we're definitely gonna stutter on two. Let's at least try it. This is 200 megabits per second, 4K, H.264 MKV. These Intels seem to handle H.264 a little better than HEVC. Overall, it's not bad. It's a big upgrade from the last generation Celerons. Those had a really hard time even doing MP4 4K 30 FPS files. But like I mentioned, these are very high bit rate. People are not going to be streaming at this rate at all. Even if you're using Kodi to watch 4K content streamed, it's not going to be at 120 megabits a second. I'm 100% sure that this will handle streaming 4K video from Prime, Hulu, Netflix, and even Kodi. You can get on YouTube and watch 4K content if you want to. I'm using the Edge browser. The Edge browser just works a lot better with these Celeron CPUs and YouTube for some reason. So far we have zero drop frames. This is going to stream 4K from YouTube just fine as long as your internet connection can handle it. If not, you're just going to have to let it buffer for a little while. Had to test out a couple Steam games here. This is the older version of Skyrim. We are at 1080p, low settings, only getting around 15-16 FPS. It's not playable at 1080p. I will drop it down to 720 and see if we can get at least 30 FPS out of this. I'm going to mess around for a second here at 1080. This little stick would be perfect to stream from your main gaming PC or even a streaming service like Shadow or GeForce Now as long as you can get signed up for it. It'll work great with something like that. So 1080 is out of the question, switching over to 720 now. And it looks like I lost sound, I think it's due to my game capture card. 720 all low settings not quite at a steady 30 fps and as soon as we get to battle it's just going to drop down even more there's a couple enemies in the background here but if they get up close it's just going to drop i'm going to test this out drop down to 18. that was just using a little bit of magic so with about three, four enemies around you using your magic, it's probably going to drop even lower than that. There are games that'll work perfectly fine on a stick like this. Half-Life 2, low settings, will do 60 FPS all day. 
there's a ton of older Steam games that'll work fine here. And finally, for PC, will it run Crisis? 720p, low settings. For some reason, every time I use Crisis on these lower end Celerons, I have no sound at all. This is not due to my game capture here. If I exit the game and come back in, the sound might come back, and it might not, so it wasn't even worth it. I'm just going to go through like this. So it's looking decent through here. I do have VSync off. If you turn VSync on, you might be able to lock it at 30 in some areas. As you saw when I was firing at him, it went down to 25. Remember, that's just one person on screen and one gun firing. No explosions going on. So the more people we have on screen shooting at us, throwing grenades, it's just going to drop even lower. I just saw it go as low as 19. I really can't stress this enough. This mini stick was not made for gaming whatsoever. It is not marketed towards gamers. I just love mini PCs and I want to see what they can really do. Now we can't run Crisis at full speed on something like this, but there are still thousands of older games that'll work fine. Speaking of older games, you know I had to test out some emulators. This is Dolphin, the GameCube slash Wii emulator running Soul Calibur 2. This is the first time I'm ever starting the game up. Dolphin still has to cash a couple shaders here and there. That was the first stage. I just knocked her out. When we go to this stage, I should be at a full 60 FPS. And it's looking good. Drop down to 57. You won't even notice that if you weren't watching the FPS. So I'm actually impressed with this N4100 here. It's been a long time coming to see these mini PCs run the Dolphin emulator this well. This is my go-to game to test with the Dolphin emulator on these mini PCs. If you watch any of my old reviews on mini PCs, you've probably seen this game running, and it ran pretty crappy on those. Now this doesn't mean that it's going to be able to run every single GameCube game at full speed. There are some games that take a little more power to run than this one here, but there are a ton of games underneath this that this stick's going to run perfectly. Really impressed with it. So that was the first round, we're moving to the second. We should get a better frame rate here, we're at 60. Now that some of those shaders that weren't cached have cached already. And we'll always run into more. So particle effects and things like that, you'll notice stutters here and there. And then the next time it comes up, you will not notice it stutter. It's not as bad as these newer emulators like SimU and RPCS3, but it's still there. Next up, some PSP emulation using PPSSPP, God of War struggles, Gran Turismo struggles, Killzone struggles, and I think it has to do with this newer version of PPSSPP, version 1.6.3. I've really had nothing but trouble with 1.6.3 on lower end devices. They did add a few features in here like multi-threaded rendering with OpenGL but I have not noticed a big increase in performance on lower end systems. Even using the Vulcan back end, God of War just runs really bad. I mean, it's about 45, 50 FPS, but the sound is pretty crunchy. Either way you look at it, God of War is a problematic game for PPSSPP, along with Midnight Club Dub Edition, Killzone Liberation, and Gran Turismo. There are a few other games out there like Arctic Edge, but pretty much, you can play PSP on here at full speed, anywhere from 1x to 4x. You're going to have to mess around with the settings, and it really depends on the game you're using. I have to throw some Dreamcast in this video here, and with the new ReDream emulator, it works like a charm on this thing. Leave it at the lowest resolution, and you can play pretty much any game as long as it's compatible with ReDream. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'm going to get a constant 60 FPS out of this. And here's Sonic Adventure 2 for Dreamcast. 
Unfortunately, I do have to mute the sound in a second because this is a copywritten song. I can let a little bit of it play. Very smooth gameplay, and it looks great at this resolution also. So overall, I'm really impressed with the Azul Access 3. This N4100 chip works well in something this small. I didn't test out, you know, SNES, Mega Drive, or MAME or anything like that, but it's going to run fine on here also. I've tested a lot of these Celeron-powered mini PCs, and I haven't found one that actually performs this well. There are some out there that are more powerful, but they're also more expensive. This comes in at $189 configured like I have it here, 4 gigabytes of DDR4, along with 32 gigabytes of internal storage. This would make an awesome little media center. Does 4K video playback really well? If it does 4K, it's going to do 1080p and 720 without a hitch. You could also play tens of thousands of retro games on this thing. Like I mentioned, it's going to do MAME really well. As you saw, it does Dreamcast really well. I didn't test it in this video, but N64 is going to work fine on something like this. The only downside I see to this unit here is the internal storage. Now I have the 32 gigabyte version, they offer a 64, but even 64 gigabytes just won't cut it these days. You can add a micro SD card. It's not super fast storage, but if you want to load ROMs or movies from it, it's going to work fine. You could always just attach a two terabyte USB 3.0 drive to something like this, and that's also going to work, but it's going to add bulk to your setup. I think one of the best solutions to this is wireless storage. Now I'm actually experimenting with this in my house. You could always set up OneDrive or Google Drive and load everything from there. But what I've done is set up an eight terabyte Western Digital Wi-Fi drive so I can connect to it and it looks just like another drive is connected to my PC. That way I have it connected to every single PC in my house. If I want to swap stuff over, I can. It's really easy to set up. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you've been looking for a mini Windows 10 PC for video playback and some older emulation, go ahead and check out the Azul Access 3. I'll leave links in the description. I've tested a ton of these mini PCs, and this is one of the best ones that I've tested. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and like always, thanks for watching.